Welcome to the Sportsman's Voice Roundup, your weekly look at conservation and sporting community news happening across the nation and on the hill. Thanks for tuning in. This is the TSV Roundup. All right, welcome everybody to another edition of the Sportsman's Voice Roundup for the week of April 22nd. This week, our lead story is Colorado Sportsman's Day, great success. We'll bring you uh, our guest, Barry Snell, to brief you on that. Uh, then we'll head to Nebraska, Maine, Louisiana, and then finally we'll head to the Hill where we can uh, discuss the American America's Wildlife Habitat and Conservation Act. Uh, more on that here in a few moments. But uh, follow-up to our last uh, featured podcast with Dan Gates and, and Barry, who uh, came in after Dan talking about the uh, the Sportsman's Day, and here we are. So, Barry, welcome once again, and, and give us an update on the uh, the hap hap happenings there in Denver. Yeah, thanks for having me, Fred. Uh, Sportsman's Day at the Capitol this year in in uh, Denver was uh, I'm calling it a, a tremendous success. Uh, you know, we expected it to be a success given the engagement that we're seeing across Colorado with sportsmen there in light of the uh, ballot initiative regarding uh, uh, big cat hunting bans and. Uh, you know, everybody's paying attention. So going into it, we knew that we'd have a pretty good uh, attendance. But uh, on the day of, of course, it was it, it had been 70 degrees and beautiful uh, all week long. And then I uh, woke up in the morning and looked out the window and uh, it was raining and cloudy and it was 30 degrees out. And uh, I was like, that's what you want for an outdoor <laughs> right, event. Right. Uh, <laughs> So I, I immediately, I was like, crap, we're going to get 20 people. You know, we, we spent all this money and we're making all this food and we're going to get like 20 people to show up. But uh, uh, Colorado came through, buddy. I got to tell you, we had uh, at least 350 people. Um, awesome. Yeah. So, so that was, you know, attendance was a little down uh, from last year. But again, last year it was like 70 degrees and, and gorgeous. And uh, But I, I'm, I, I think 350 in, in the rain, yeah. it's, it's, it snowed on us, it sleeted on us. It was it was never nice, not even for five minutes, and uh, we had a huge crowd of people coming through to get. Uh, we had moose and elk burgers and some elk sausages. Uh, we deep fried some Rocky Mountain oysters, which is kind of a oh cool a local delicacy. Uh, yeah, there and uh, it, we were very well received. Uh, with our caucus co chairs came out and gave uh, some speeches, and, and as did some of our uh, partners there. Uh, in in Colorado, and uh, we actually awarded Senator Perry Will uh, basically a lifetime achievement award, is what it amounts to, because um, Perry is wow. retiring sadly, uh, and he's been one of our greatest advocates in the Colorado legislature for many many years. And before that, I mean, I, Perry's done everything. He's been a conservation officer. He's been on the commission. Uh, he's he's done everything, uh, held every position that you can imagine uh, to help sportsmen out in Colorado. So, uh, we were very happy to award him that, but of course we're very sad to see him go too. Talk to us about some of the, the speeches, the talking points that were covered. I mean, you already talked about the ballot initiative there with the cats. Do you think that was the biggest, uh, rallying point or is there other issues that, um, uh, Coloradans were, were there to, uh, speak to their legislators about? Yeah. So initiative 91 is, is definitely probably the rallying point. Uh, right now in Colorado, uh, we, you know, we've got the wolf reintroduction that's happening now. We've got some uh, depredation that's occurring, and uh, some more and more stories are coming about uh, out of that about every week, it seems. Uh, yeah. So that kind of woke folks up, and they're really paying attention to the ballot initiative. Um, but Sportsman's Day was was kind of, uh, I would say, it was largely about fellowship and just being with people of like mind and, and uh, kind of being there for our caucus and being there for some of the folks in the Capitol who might not necessarily be aware of our issues so much or aware of who we are. And we, that gave us an opportunity to interact with them and them to interact with us and, and, uh, you know, see that the camel wearing crowd, maybe we're not so bad after all. Yeah. Yeah. So in that, in that spirit, I, uh, understand there was a special declaration that, that was, uh, made. Yeah, uh, thanks for bringing that up. We had a, a resolution uh, in both the House and the Senate declaring uh, April 18th to be Sportsman's Day in Colorado, and uh, that was run uh, pretty much one after the other. They did it in the House, and they did it right away in the Senate, and uh, they did that 
pretty much before we got the festivities rolling yeah. outside. And so everybody was mostly on hand afterwards. A lot of the legislators came out, so um, they were able to join us out there. But yeah, we had about half of our crowd was inside watching that while another half was out, you know, preparing the food for everybody to, to come mm -hmm. in and, and prepare for the rush. That's fantastic. Aside from the food, any activities, any uh, partner highlights uh, to talk about? Well, uh, you know, we had a, a lot of our sponsors were there, of course. Um, I, I hesitate to start naming them because inevitably I'll forget some people. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, like we, we had SCI, RMEF, the guides and, and outfitters, um, the, the Muley fanatics, uh, you know, everybody, pretty much anybody who is anybody in Colorado was there. Yep. And uh, if, 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 forgive me for anybody listening to this, if, if I leave you off the list, it was, it was quite extensive. Uh, all of our partners there is, is quite a list. Um, you know, we had Gasper Paracone, who's the chair of the uh, CWCP out there. He he spoke as well, and he's kind of one of the point men out there leading the fight. Uh, one of the lobbyists uh, who is uh, working pretty tirelessly, frankly. There's a lot of legislation, and, and he's one of the guys that's on the front lines down in Denver every day, day in, day out, uh, working on our issues. Yeah. Well, that's all good, man. Um what uh you know aside from the camaraderie do you think uh you know 350 strong and some in some awful weather do you do you feel like there was some some positive energy that came out of there obviously overcome the 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 conditions but is there a, a wave of momentum to ride so these people go back into their 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 neighborhoods and 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 bring that energy with them especially you know when we're talking about this ballot initiative and, and trying to uh, thwart it before november yeah, absolutely. And I, I would actually say that the uh, great attendance, despite the bad conditions, is a sign of that wave, that tidal wave that's come in, that there's a lot of energy right now. And we're seeing now when we do our uh, monthly virtual caucus meetings, we're getting, you know, lots of people sitting for the entire hour watching a webinar and nobody likes webinars, you know, but they they, <laughs> they, they sit through the whole hour and, and uh, watch us talk about what's going on in the legislature there in Denver. Uh, you know, we've I mean, I get emails every day from people in Colorado asking, you know, who do I need to talk to to help with this and help with that? So I, I definitely say that uh, the, the the pulse has quickened in Colorado and, and folks are Good. engaged as ever. Well, that's fantastic. Barry, uh, give you a chance to update us on anything else uh, noteworthy uh, in your area, any of your states while we have you? Well, I would probably say one of the biggest pieces of news in the Southwest is uh, the governor of New Mexico has declared a special session. She's calling it a, and I'm air quotes here for your, your listeners, a public safety session. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it promises to be a, a, a anti-gun filled. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to last, but at least a few weeks. Uh, she wasn't able to get through a lot of her um, anti-gun and anti-hunter agenda this year. They had only had a 30-day session. so. Uh, she uh, made some promises last year that uh, she wants to try and, and keep. So we're going to be battling that here in July. So we can look forward to that. Well, great. This is the very same governor that uh, basically tried to outlaw the Second Amendment um, last year, right. which was just absolutely shocking. And, and yeah, I mean, this is where we're at in 2024. Uh, they, don't, they don't hide uh, their feelings, and they're just, throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks. And if, uh, in this case, if the citizenry at large, if American citizens don't, uh, go to the, the ballot box in November and, and, you know, just say you're fired, uh, because, uh, in the spirit of our constitution and our civil liberties, you are trampling all over them with these insane ideas. Uh, that doesn't fit square peg, round hole, all of it, you know, or vice versa. It's just not going to work, but it takes an active citizenry to go out there and exercise uh, the privilege, the right to vote, and, and, and just like your, you know, with your Sportsman's Day and getting getting more people out there that, uh, you know, in inclement weather, like it's just important to show up and then have that that wave of momentum and, and stop bad stuff. So, man, I feel for you. Good luck uh, in New Mexico with that. I, I certainly uh, I feel you because I, you know, as you know, here in uh, the Northeast and Massachusetts and. New York and Connecticut, uh, we're no strangers to that same insanity, uh, especially when it comes to uh, firearms and, and the rights thereof. So, man, that's a lot. Cats, yeah. gun, and uh, 
and and and, and the West Coast. So God bless you, buddy. Yeah, well, look, um, go ahead. As I say, appreciate that. And the you know, of course, if you want to get in on the phone, you're welcome to call. Come on down, Fred, and we'll uh, we'll definitely put you up, and put you to work. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, I'd have to find another level of of containment. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> certainly a professional, but that stuff does. As a citizen of this country, as a, someone you know that is very passionate about um, freedom and and civil liberties, and you know everything that comes with being an American and working for freedom, it uh, yeah, it gets under my skin, and um, I just I just can't hide that. So yeah, um, you got you got a hill to climb, but um, I know you know if what's happening in Colorado will spread to the other Southwest states, uh, we, we should stand a, a good chance, and and. You know, that little thing called the Constitution just may come into play and protect us. So let's let's hope that works out. Yep. Right on. Barry, thanks so much. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate your support. Yeah, man. Thanks for uh, the time today. And uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. You too. All right. Thanks so much to Barry uh, for joining us uh, back to back weeks here. Uh, that's just a good story there. And, um, you know, I'd like to see that replicated. And then. You know, if you're a legislator and you're or you're a co-chair in your your particular sportsman's caucus, or if you're on the hill and you think it's a great idea to have a sportsman's day at your state house, do get in touch with your CSF representative. One of our uh, team members there on the ground in your region will be more than happy to uh, start that conversation and and then uh, you know put some flesh on those bones. And I think that's a real great way. To show to show the public at large, and and your fellow lawmakers who we are and what we do and, and really represent us well and creates a great opportunity uh, for folks just to ask questions. You know, sometimes when they're in committee meetings and and you're on the floor and 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 you have your particular side of the aisle and you don't want to deviate from it. Well, here you go. Here's a a real uh, low pressure. Um, positive energy, positive environment to come get your questions answered and learn a little bit more. Maybe you have questions about trapping or maybe you have questions about semi-automatic firearms and, you know, how many different variants there are. And then, you know, they all don't um, fit into that, that one mean, uh, scary uh, AR style uh, platform. So anyway, I digress. A lot of good stuff there in Colorado. Uh, let's continue on with the rest of the headlines. We're heading to uh, Nebraska, where the legislative legislative session saw a fair share of legislation that would ultimately have had negative impacts on the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission funding. Uh, there were several bills aimed at offering free and discounted license licenses, and a bill to divert millions of dollars away from the uh, the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Despite these efforts, uh, Congressional Sportsman's Foundation remained active in opposing and offering proposed amendments to the bills to uphold the American system of conservation. Legislative Bill 826 and 1036 were bills that aimed to offer free uh, and discounted hunting and fishing licenses to residents and non-resident veterans. Uh, Legislative Bill 1413 would have redirected a total of $9.5 million in sportsman-generated dollars away from the uh, Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. So CSF was active in safeguarding uh, our system of conservation funding by offering amendments uh, to reimburse Nebraska Game Park Commission uh, from the state general fund at no cost, uh, for no cost and discounted licenses and opposing legislation that would have directed the $9.5 million in sportsman dollars in 2003 alone, NGPC received $27.4 million in federal appointments. Through CSF's efforts, over $37 million was protected, and the NGPC can continue their conservation efforts that will benefit all Nebraskans. That's brought to you us by uh, Jake Gould. Good stuff there. Thanks, Jake. Heading to Maine uh, from yours truly. Um, unfortunate news to to bring to you. Despite our efforts, uh, Maine Legislative Docket 2238 titled an act 
to address gun violence in Maine by requiring a waiting period for certain firearm purchases um, has passed. That is an implementation of a 72-hour waiting period. The um, the governor there in, in the state of Maine, uh, Governor Sportsman's Caucus member Janet Mills, uh, issued uh, a letter to lawmakers that uh, the the session would be adjourning uh, the second regular session of the 131st Maine State Legislature on the 17th, and that um, there would not be a special session called, and that all um, all the legislator was to complete their work within the prescribed time frame. Uh, so quickly, uh, 2238 was picked up and moved forward, and um, you know will now continue its its path to the governor's desk and uh rest assured we will uh be engaging governor mills and requesting um further action and that does not find its way uh into being codified so more to come out of maine but uh look and and if you're not familiar uh with the with the happenings in maine last fall uh there was an unfortunate tragic uh event with a uh with an individual who went on a a killing spree in lewiston maine and uh as a result of that and often is the case as soon as the news breaks nowadays i mean we media at least and 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 um uh, policy makers who are anti second amendment and not pro-gun um would at least give the the ability of uh, a couple days before they started their rhetoric. Uh, now, uh, within minutes, literally within minutes, uh, you have lawmakers demanding action and demanding that from their leadership. And, you know, here we go. This is uh, part of a result of that. Looking for something uh, they, they can they can chalk up as a win, I suppose. Um, and, and this is, you know, death by a thousand cuts kind of deal. Some, some administrations... Like we've talked about in Massachusetts, look for sweeping gun care packages, uh, gun control packages, rather, trying to get all of it. Um, and then, you know, the here's the death by a thousand cut strategy where we're going to get 72 hour waiting periods. We're going to pick on magazine capacity. We're going to pick on furniture, you know, just every little bit. It'll add up to what will amount to a full suite of, of gun control measures um, and none of it good and none of it based um and any sort of logic or reasoning, as we all know, a lot of these wish list items uh, do nothing, absolutely nothing to control criminal activity. Um, by its very nature, criminal activity uh, in itself is not law abiding, right? So uh, I don't need to really beat that drum to this audience, but um, you know, someone, especially at our, our capitals, needs to uh, understand that line of thought. Let's go down south to Louisiana, where legislation to protect conservation funding advances. Let's hear from Mark Lance. Legislation that reimburses the State Fish and Wildlife Agency for revenue lost due to the creation of free and discounted hunting license is an effective way to protect conservation funding. Uh, and we've talked about it. We just talked about it uh, over in Nebraska. We've talked about this in the, in the past in other states. On March 27th, House Bill 795, which would have provided the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries reimbursement of revenue reductions through the state general fund resulting from free and discounted recreational hunting license and fish hunting and fishing licenses created by the legislator. On April 16th, 795 passed the House Committee of Natural Resources and Environmental Environment unanimously uh, 9 to 0. So prior to the committee meeting, Congressional Sportsman's Foundation submitted testimony in support of the bill. 795 is not retroactive, so free and discounted license that are currently on the books will not be effective. Uh, therefore, there is no fiscal impact to the state unless the legislature passes a free or discounted license, license on or after the effective date of House Bill. 795. That letter uh, 
of support that was submitted stated, while some of the free or discounted licenses result in what could be considered a minor impact on license revenue, that loss becomes more significant when considering the loss of additional funds that would have been otherwise uh, have been apportioned through uh, WSFR to determine Louisiana uh, to determine Louisiana's apportionment through this federal program. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uses a formula that in part considers the number of certified hunting and fishing licenses sold in the state to be certified. Each license sale must generate a net revenue of $2. Otherwise, the state receives no federal funds for the license sale. Free and discounted hunting licenses uh, that do not meet the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service guidelines cost Louisiana not only the direct revenue from the free or discounted license, but also the three-to-one federal match. So, as you've heard in the past, a very well-intended uh, idea that has um, a considerable amount of negative consequences. So, you know, how do you, <laughs> how do we uh, oppose something that sounds so great and, and um, you know, not feel like we got egg on our face? Well, we have language to provide. We have the solution uh, and we are ready to engage at your state level where this is coming up. And, uh, you know, just like uh, Mark's letter said, and um, many of our other uh, team members uh, on the st- at the state level have, have articulated, um, this all works if we can, and we can work together and have that, that reimbursement put back in place and then everyone wins. So, um, thank you, Mark, for bringing us that. And then finally, let's head to the hill. Taylor Schmitz brings us House Committee Passes CSC Co-Chair Representative Westerman's Comprehensive Fish and Wildlife Habitat Bill. Uh, We've talked about this with Taylor. Uh, The short of it is um, that last week, the House Natural Resources Committee passed the American America's Wildlife Habitat Conservation Act Resolution 70, 7408, a comprehensive fish and wildlife habitat bill led by Congressional Sportsman's Caucus co-chair and chairman of the Natural Resources Committee, Representative Bruce Westerman. And that timing is very apropos. Uh, as I teased last week uh, in the roundup, tomorrow on our feature-length podcast drop, the Every Other Thursday edition, uh, we bring you a conversation with uh, myself, policy federal policy director Taylor Schmitz, and Chairman Westerman. We were able to go down there, uh, have some time with the chairman, and get his thoughts on his legislation, what that means. Talk a little turkey. So um, there you have it. I'll, I will let you all tune in for that Thursday edition of the uh the sportsman's voice podcast and you can hear it from the man himself and uh, a little bit more so that's it that's our update for the week of april 22nd signing off from a a brisk and seasonally cold cape cod where our uh northeast afwa conference is underway and uh Lots of good stuff coming coming out of this conference. I hope to uh, do a little recap, bring some of that to you, uh, partners, state agency directors. Uh, just a, it's a really good gathering of, of um, professionals in our space, all collaborating and, and trying to work together to solve to solve problems, to introduce solutions, some new science. So uh, great stuff from down here on Cape Cod. Have a good week, everybody, and do be sure to tune in on Thursday for that feature-length conversation with Chairman Westerman. Until next Wednesday, be safe out there. If you're still turkey hunting, keep it safe. Many of us here in the Northeast are, uh, are, are just about to kick it off this weekend and then go full tilt just a few days before or on May 1st, so uh, our time here in the Northeast has finally come and very much looking forward to that. All right. Be good out there. Be safe. And uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. See ya. 
Thanks for joining us on this edition of the Sportsman's Voice podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, your support is crucial, and you can help us out right now by leaving a review, filling in those five stars where available, sharing this episode with friends and family, and engaging with us socially. CSF can be found on Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter. Together, we can protect the outdoor sports we love and continue to keep you informed wherever you are. That's it for this week. Until next time, see you later.